We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Don't forget that. We are having a wonderful time here. We're hoping that you have a wonderful time as well. No matter what the condition in the country might be, life must go on. It's a midweek and we're happy to know that you are there and watching us right now. Uh, we have these fuel subsidy removal that we've been talking about all this time and we were thinking about how the market is going to be after this fuel subsidy has been removed. Who will be in charge of importing and exporting, uh, as the case may be? Uh, is it still the NNPCL, or uh, will it be open to the general public, as it were? Whoever can get the license to do whatever can do it. It's a free market right now. Or at least that is what we were hoping it's going to be. But we have heard the Independent Petroleum Market Association saying the federal government must break NNPC's monopoly on importation, which means there still is a problem in that. So we're glad to have joining us here uh, a member of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, uh, Chief Ukadike Chinedu, talking to us from uh, Port Harcourt. Good morning and welcome to the program, Chief. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised that um, uh, Ipman is still talking about uh, breaking the monopoly of NNPC. We thought that with the fuel subsidy removal and the petroleum industry bill, NNPC wouldn't have that monopoly anymore to import uh, fuel. Give us the true situation right now uh, in, the in the importation of the fuel into Nigeria. Yeah, um, it is uh, quite correct. Uh, as I've explained to you today, NMPC is the only source of petroleum products uh, sourcing in Nigeria. Uh, it's, only, uh, it's only NMPCL that normally supplies independent petroleum market as products. We also have other tank farms, uh, uh, private tank farm owners who also source from NMPC, NMPC trading. So it is only NMPC that have the, the framework and the enablement to be able to import petroleum products. Now that subsidy is removed and uh, there is a deregulated economy uh, market, we independent marketers, we are also back to ready to be able to source our petroleum products ourselves so that we can be able to reduce the pricing of petroleum products. Because uh, the template set by NMPC is monopolistic. Uh, NMPC will set their own template at any given time. So in a competitive environment, in a deregulated environment, it's first, first, it's first of demand and supply that means price. It is not availability that determines price. So for now, the only source of availability of petroleum products in Nigeria is the NMPC. And that's why independent marketers were also uh, looking forward and also asking governments to be able to give us the enablement, all the framework to also import petroleum products as our own pace and distribute to our, our members. You will be very, very aware and statistically clear that independent marketers uh, have 90% of retail happiness uh, nationwide in, uh, in all the most and crime of this country. So we have the structure of distribution. We have the structure of distribution and we want to utilize it food to ensure that uh, products uh, get to the market. And by the time independent marketers start importing petroleum products, I want to tell you the issue of a uh, high price of a drone product will be a thing of the past. We will make sure and we will research and find out where we can be able to get petroleum products uh, later uh, at the largest cost at least 400 to 300. Okay, but what are the provisions in the PIB regarding importation of this uh, fuel into Nigeria? Because when everybody was applauding the federal government of passing this bill into law, uh, we uh, hoped that it was going to cover all these things. So what does it provide in the PIB uh, for importation? Well, the, the, the Nigerians were good in making uh, very, very good policies, but implementation becomes a very big problem. Because uh, this uh, deregulation was uh, kind of came like a certain death. So, uh, maybe. 
Well, Chief Okadik Chinedu, Ipman member, they're talking to us about uh, the monopoly uh, that NNPC is enjoying even till now after the passing of the PIB, that is the Petroleum Information Bill. And um, we were hoping that these questions or these problems will not arise anymore. Uh, I would have loved to hear what the PIB said about this, the stand of the PIB on uh, importation of fuel. And I, I would also have loved to hear um, what it, it takes for anybody to be able to import fuel into the country right now. So what is it that the government needs to do uh, for people uh, to, to get these licenses and what, the, what is the process like, you know, so, so that we get to know these things and other challenges that uh, uh, they might be facing right now. Is Chief Kadike back with us? Chief, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 we also know that uh, that is the, the issue of uh, sourcing of uh, uh, foreign currency. You don't, you can't go and buy petroleum products. It's not bought by uh, bought with naira. So the sourcing of petroleum, uh, sourcing of dollar, is very, very important. Um, federal government will uh, make available um, uh, forex for independent marketers that want to uh, buy petroleum, uh, buy, uh, buy product or import product into this country. These are some of the issues that uh, uh, will be discussed with the federal government and the rate in which the government is going to give us the dollar to be able to import our product. We have already done our research, we are ready, we are battle ready to import. So it's for the federal government to be able to uh, sit down with us and to sit down with CDN and see how we can be able to sort our dollar and repatriate our, our money by the time we finish sales. So these are some important and hiccup issues that uh, uh, the federal government needs to sit down is all important. Yeah, when you say you are ready to, to take up that challenge, what do you really mean? What have you put in place to make sure that if you are given the opportunity, you can do that? Yeah, well, what I'm trying to tell you is that we have, the, we have the resources. We also have the structure. You understand? We are not only looking for the market. We have a holistic market. You know, we have obstacles, which are our members, which, which is our members. So we're not looking for where we are going to buy the uh, self or distribute. We see in the banana market that evacuates almost 75% of the zone products imported in this country. So we are ready. We have the structure. We have the storage facility. So we are ready to do that. We are not looking for, we're not going to um, uh, uh, build new filling stations. We have set our position to the set of us to be able to compete with the, the Mormon and Dutchman members. Most of our physicians are, 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 are edifices. So that is what I'm trying to tell you. That we are ready to have the structure in the use and value of this country to be able to we have any product that is imported by ourselves. So what we are looking at is for cheap product. We want competition. We don't want uh, NNPC uh, to box us in a corner and give us and tie our money down for months without even supplying us. As I'm talking to you now, we have over Seven to seven thousand uh, 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 tickets tied in NNPC coffers for the past three four months, and the bank interests are, are growing. So it is, it's a it's a market liberalisation. That's what we want because <clears throat> we are profit oriented. Our daily sales. Okay, Chief Okadike, we we have lost your audio. We are hoping that you will rejoin us. Uh, Tweak it a little bit, do the, what you need to do and rejoin us because there are things we need to really find out uh, uh, from uh, you as an Ipman representative here on the show this morning. For instance, uh, uh, when you're talking about um, the, the, the things that you're going to do and all that, what is the level of engagement that you have had with the federal government as we stand, as, as at now, what is the level of engagement that you have had? Chief Kadike, can you hear me now? I'm hearing you. Okay, okay, okay fine. Uh, you, were saying, you were saying so many things, but um, uh, your audio went off. But right now, uh, I'd like to know the level you have gone in engaging the federal government and the relevant authorities so that this thing will, as soon as possible, be put on your lap. What's your level of engagement yes, with, you, you, with the federal you government? Cannot, you yeah. can understand that uh, the policy of this deregulation came up and uh, it's very because of the Mr. President's uh, uh, inaugural speech. And during that inaugural speech, he uh, told Nigeria that the uh, subsidy regime has gone. So I also think that uh, uh, the, the 
the government is also putting up a lot of things at the same time, you know, quickly. So they're able to uh, put everybody on the face. So uh, there's a lot of confusion now. And uh, I also believe that uh, there's a short period of time. Then as much as the government is, uh, is, is new, the problem we have is institutionalization. If we have a very good institutions, when the government comes and goes, the institutions run. So we're also waiting for government to be able to invite us so that we can be able to sit down with them. And they look at what we have and be able to uh, look at what they want so that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do our exportation. Uh, let's, we'll, go, we'll come back to this discussion of uh, importation of fuel and all that, but uh, the, the worry that Nigerians and experts have always had uh, is that we do not even have the data of, uh, the consumption, of consumption of fuel in, in Nigeria. So as a member of the Independent Marketers Association of Nigeria, how do you, how do you collate your data? What, what can you say about the consumption capacity of Nigeria daily or monthly or yearly as it regards the uh, petroleum products that we sell? Because the figures that have been given by the federal government all these years as consumption, or the, the amount of uh, fuel that is consumed in Nigeria, it's, it's scary. So do you have a, the same figure or a different figure from what the federal government has always been giving, that this is the amount of fuel that comes into Nigeria on a daily basis? Well, uh, in terms of... Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. In terms of uh, uh, data or, or statistics about consumption rate in Nigeria, you know, a lot of uh, information has been alleged that the uh, product is being uh, uh, smuggled out of this country, the neighboring country. Mm. And we also, also so, yeah, Mr. President, uh, also saying that you cannot be able to subscribe products for neighboring countries in this country. So we cannot be able to actually quantify uh, products being consumed in Nigeria. But I also know that the uh, NFPCL allocates some millions of liters to independent marketers and we are able to evaporate them. So with what is going on uh, and the, 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 the price of petroleum products, I also believe that uh, uh, neighboring countries looking at uh, the price of petroleum products, the smuggling of petroleum products now to the neighboring countries will not be a profitable business. So those people, as I said, this uh, subsidy has also put a stop to that. And uh, I also believe that uh, with uh, the massive order given to the security agencies by Mr. President, that the issue of smuggling, bumping, and all the rest of them will stop. So by the time we'll, we'll, we'll be able to uh, look at the, the first stream quarter, we can be able to say actually what, uh, what uh, we can be able to consume. But for now, we cannot be able to analyze what we can be able to consume just because uh, uh, of these lapses of uh, smuggling across the border. Okay. Uh, well, Let's look at what the, uh, the federal government has always been saying. Um, it gives people concern that whenever they're talking petroleum and whatever is happening in that industry, they refer to Dangote, which is, also, which is just a private business. No matter how many people are investing in it, whether they themselves are investing, we hear that NNPC bought like 20% uh, of the shares, and I don't know why that is, and uh, abandoned their, their, their own refineries and bought 20% of the shares in a private company that is coming up. But the, the arrival of Dangote um, uh, refinery, how will it affect Ipman, positively or negatively, and why? Well, uh, well, put it because uh, this is another uh, uh, breaking of the monopoly by uh, NNPC or NNPC and its uh, uh, subsidiary, you know, or these companies, you know. Uh, uh, Dan Gode coming on board is another source for independent marketers to be able to solve the petroleum product. And I think that Dan Gode is also a, a kind of creating a kind of network whereby uh, they will also supply this petroleum product door to door. So it will also make uh, products purchase uh, you know, more easier for independent marketers. I also tell you that we are interested in dispensing, breaking the bulk, in dispensing petroleum marketers to promote us to me and you. So it is very, very well, it is a very welcome uh, scenario that uh, we are also having a second chance. We also uh, uh, want to also 
uh, encourage uh, those that uh, have modular refinery uh, in this country. It's also a source of our petroleum products too. So if uh, some of these uh, modular refineries can be able to spring up, and the um, government will ensure and support them and supply them the necessary food they need to refine their petroleum products, I think that will also be a source. You see, the essence of uh, uh, deregulation and subsidy removal should be able to drive competition in terms of sourcing petroleum products and in terms of supply. All these uh, issues uh, would also help independent marketers to, to uh, leverage them to be able to uh, have uh, opportunity to source their petroleum products at any given time, uh, at any particular place, and even uh, closest to, to dispensing. Because most of our problem is trucking. You know, that is why the federal government has also scrapped the petroleum production fund. So if uh, refineries are, are being, uh, the refineries are being uh, situated here and there, and source of petroleum products are very, very close to independent marketers, you will find that the issue of this high price of petroleum products will go, or the issue of preparing will go, because it will be very, very easier for independent marketers to drive within 50 kilometers or 30 kilometers radius and so their petroleum product come back to the station and say it will also serve the rules into the world, the way of the vehicle and also give life to the business uh, the money is doing. But some people have um, some people have said that uh, uh, Dangote until those modular refineries that you're calling for come on board and that Dangote will be another monopoly, which will be worse than the NNPC when it was under the government and all that. Uh, I don't know how you'd respond to that. Uh, government has said that they had uh, left that uh, sector and uh, said that everybody could have a refinery, but only Dangote came up, and maybe one or two uh, modular refineries here and there. But people still fear that Dangote, being a major player the, w the way he is right now, will be a monopoly, and that monopoly will be worse than the federal government's monopoly when it was NNPC. How would you respond to that? Well, uh, I, I, well the Dangote refinery coming on board is a way of development. I want to tell us it's a honest, which is a way of development. We encourage it. We we'll thank God that, uh, that will, no matter how people feel about it, we we'll have a refinery that is working. Now, uh, we also have uh, uh, kicked against uh, Nigerians just depending on Dangote, or the federal government heaving on Dangote refinery. For our only as only source of petroleum product in this world. No, uh, we are expecting Mr. President to uh, give uh, a set of emergency, declare a set of emergency in all these our four refineries and ensure that within a specific period of time that the fire will come on board. It will drive competition. What we want is competition. We are not against it. If, Tangode, if another person can also come and build a refinery, what we want is competition. We will sell our petroleum product and we will sell to our consumer. We want to sell at the, to the lowest rate so that people can be able to buy this product. If you see what is going on in the, in the country now, most of our fuel stations sell 3,000 liters a day. 5,000, some sell 20,000 liters a day. Some sell 5,000 liters a day. But since this uh, increase in price, most of us don't even sell up to 500 liters. So the business is very, very bad. It's trying to extinguish it. And the capital is very, very huge. So the coming of Dangote should not, should, should not be a minus. Rather, it should be a plus, we should encourage it, and uh, we're also ready to source our petroleum product from there. But let it not be limited, and we're all dependent on Dangote, since we are independent of import importation of petroleum products. This time around, the issue of the cost of vessel and vessel that will not be too much on, on us. It's, it's, it's maybe it's a local shuttle vessel, and they will to take product from Dangote refinery and distribute to the PBOs, where we have uh, most of our tank farms uh, located in the coastal areas. So I think the coming of our coming of Dangote is a very, very good one. We will not use uh, cement and indomie and all the rest of them to be able to improve what is going to happen in the Iran capital. But petroleum product is very, very essential. It drives the domestic economy and even the international economy. What are some of the greatest challenges that you have as, um, as independent marketers? Some of the challenges that you have. Let's just uh, have a feel of what you go through as independent marketers in that sector? 
can, can I get the question again? What are some of the challenges, some of the greatest challenges you face as independent petroleum marketers? Okay. Uh, some of the challenges we have, especially security. Now that the product is very, very high, now that the stock of petroleum product costs which is one uh, million naira and above, we are also scared that some of these are our, our uh, trucks that is on road should be guided very, very well to so ensure that what we found, the, the, the 400 or something kilometer uh, road that they are, they are moving, uh, they, they should be secured because it's a lot of money. Most of the, because of this increment, most of the development are doing enough business because they cannot be able to raise such huge capital to be able to continue in this business. Or they will not start combining those of them. So we need security in terms of uh, handling of our power taxes and in our police station. These are very, very, very important issues. So that we can be able to say, even if it's for eight hours, so that we can recoup our, our, our investment. Another challenge we will have is fund, cost of fund. Very, 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 uh, very, very big challenge for independent marketers. Because we don't have what we call the petroleum bank or energy bank as we opened before, we will still go to commercial bank and take um, money on a very high interest rate to be able to uh, sell petroleum products. And look at the kind of margin. And then this is selling three for the product to us as 400 is something uh, some to 490. And when they are they are also putting a ceiling of 511 there. So when you look at it, you are using it one million dollars to make a plan 300,000. It's not business at all. So that is why we are traveling for more sources of this development so that we can be able to go to where it is very, very cheap when the market has. And we will be able to price the price. Because I also bet you. That when the golden product was around 195 dollars per liter, independent marketers were selling 193, 193, some positions, just because of our competitive measure. So we were able to see that we were able to return the, the, the money we bought from back, and also be able to do a very good product. So we have the um, cost of uh, cost of fund is very very heavy on us, and because of this huge uh, amount of money, most of us are now so clamoring back to their bank to be able to increase their the loan facilities, which is a very, very, very high, very, very high, very, very high interest rate. And some of the challenges by government, by NDPR, and some of this, we do all this unnecessary uh, documents, and NPC and uh, NDPR are asking independent marketers. At any particular time you want to renew your license, you go into a hall of uh, real uh, police clearance and all and no unnecessary taxes. And when you will see an NDPR of independent marketers in this session, People will not think that uh, you are making billions of naira, and the uh, local government and all the will come and charge you a certain amount. Without knowing that we are very, very essential, we also service oriented, in as much as we are making mega profit. So most of these uh, government taxes are not less of them, and all the uh, unnecessary uh, uh, taxes that have been incurred on independent marketers, is, 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 the government should also try to see us how can we able to review that, to be able to give us an enabling environment in a competitive market. To be able to try and survive. So there are so a lot of uh, uh, challenges in the marketers have. But if I continue, uh, I, I think I will not, will not uh, have enough time to discuss other uh, important issues. When you talked about security, um, are, are you talking about the need for uh, police personnel, for instance, to be at the filling stations and the, your tank farms? Uh, is it not enough to have private security be there? What kind of things do you face uh, at the filling station that you need police presence all the time? And how much of this police presence do you really need in a filling station? Well, it's a, it's a filling station is a very, very volatile area. Well, we experience a lot of uh, break and entry, uh, and robbery, and uh, hijacking of petroleum uh, trucks. Uh, driver harassment of uh, uh, tanker drivers along the road, hijacking of some of these uh, tanker drivers. Well, we have been expressing it, and uh, we also have been put it to the uh, authority. But, uh, there is no competition. So we need adequate security, especially some of our stations that do for eight hour service, you know, uh, during the night, uh, the next morning, uh, you know, to improve, because this is a reduction uh, period. Everybody wants to compete. Everybody wants to be in the market. Everybody wants to be able to utilize this uh, opportunity to be able to do a very good turnover. So it is also important that even if you have
some private sectors. It is just what's not up. It is also important that uh, federal government should look at it to see how, how they can be able to stagger uh, security personnel in some areas where our police station is being protected. So they will monitor those areas and find uh, and cop uh, and cop uh, unnecessary attack on uh, some of our facilities. Okay, before we go, uh, I'd like a confirmation from you. We heard that um, gas, the price for gas and jet fuel has come down. I'd like you to just confirm it, if that is true. Yeah, uh, yes, I also had that. I also had that issue that uh, I'm not uh, uh, gotten the, the, the actual price, like the way the PMS price was being lit up or the social media. We are yet to confirm from, from, from that. Uh, we are yet to confirm that I, I heard that the price is uh, going down. And even that of the uh, gasoline AJ is also going down. So this is uh, this a beauty of, uh, of uh, deregulation and the competitive environment. So uh, since uh, gasoline is almost selling around 600 or something, around 500 or something, so again, 750, 800. Uh, it's a welcome development. If we can also be able to have some to move on. because we spend, we spend heavily on that where our our utilization is gas driven, our trucks are gas are gas driven, some of our homes are gas driven. So when you buy a to uh, power your fuel station, you know what it costs in the month, and the the, the, the price margin is bigger. Most of us are even uh, operating at a loss. Well, um, this brings me to, this is the very final one. This brings me to what people have been saying, that uh, independent marketers are very wicked because the fuel subsidy actually will last till June, and after June, that's when it will go. But after the announcement by the president, which did not really mean that it has begun, it is, it is gone in the sense that it will not continue from June. Uh, but the, the prices went up like 300% in filling stations from, from 250 Naira. Some people were, they began to sell at 700 Naira. Can you explain to us why that happened, why that had to happen if it had to happen? Yeah, I also believe that uh, federal government uh, should be, uh, uh, prepare a strong policy for independent marketers because we are the ones that bear the, bear the bonds. We are the ones that break the bond. We are the ones that are the people. We dispense to Jericho, we dispense to Kepro, we dispense to um, Taz. So, uh, whenever there is uh, an impulse or the feeling or reaction from the masses, it is in the three stations, some of them, the damage from our platforms and all the rest of them. Even when the uh, MMPC import bad fuel uh, to this country, it destroyed our brand. Most of our three stations were being attacked. So our managers were being arrested and we are picking all the rest of them. And uh, it is not even our fault. MMPC came with this and uh, said, yes, we imported bad fuel. We are trying to stop it. They never did. We were able to manage those, those period of time and those threats and all the rest of them. We really suffered a lot about this business, but we are proud that we are independent marketers. That is one thing for sure. You know, the issue of having bad names and all the rest of them, well, it's also in business. You can't say independent marketers have bad names. No. We are selling, so we have been consistent. Even during COVID, we are, we are selling. And uh, we are very service to the people. Because we know that uh, if we shut down, people will say we are hard. Uh, government will bring police. Government will come and start harassing us. Even in our own situation. Even in our own facility. Even the product we bought, we use our own money to buy. As a marketer, you don't even have right to say you don't want to sell today. You must sell to the public. So the issue of... Uh, uh, that uh, government made them the policy and uh, we start to record it. I told you, the no government policy, I have uh, tickets, independent market tickets, over 9,000 uh, in the system of government for the past three months. Those tickets have gone related as I'm talking to you today. That, those tickets we have bought, somebody we have bought around 8 for something million, so we have around 7 for something million. We paid for NMPC, NMPC and copper. As I said, I'm to you, and some of them are not going to do this. And then this is the step loss. We'll bring 13.8 million naira to augment so that we can be able to carry our product. Where do we get such money from? Mm. Everybody wants to take advantage of each other. When the, the, the Mr. President said, the, 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 
all the uh, commuters who line up in the police station to buy petroleum products. The way the pump was, was adjusted, everybody ran away. Nobody had the independent marketer to blame again. No more long queues. Now, something you, you bought for 8.7 million there. Now they say you should bring 13 million so that you can be able to carry it. Mm. Who do we complain to? I see. Where do you get this money? Where do you sell this kind of money from? I see. Even we have paid this money before Mr. President made this policy. Why is it that still holding that scheme? Why didn't you download us at that old price so that we can sell at that old price to the computers? Yeah, have you seen how we can we are? Can you sue an NPC? You should be able to sue an NPC, shouldn't you? <laughs> yes, because you're well, paid for the product and now they're asking you for more. It's not your fault. They should have given you at the time you paid. You should sue them. <laughs> that is, a, that is, that is the, the, what we have been facing. For the past uh, four days now, since Mr. President, President Mr. President has made that statement, we have not loaded one liter from uh, NMPC. They were busy loading their own company. They were busy loading their own uh, police station. And I'm feeling it's under lock and key. Mm. How can we be happy in this kind of country? Okay, we feel your pain right and now. And the independent market are wicked. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know who the real wicked person is, or the people are. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> thank you so much, Shiva Ukadike okay. Chinedu, for coming on the show and enlightening us what the challenges are and calling for uh, the solutions that you think will, are workable uh, for all of us in our own interest. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. I, I, I appreciate Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, that was uh, Chief Ukadike uh, Chinedu, a uh, member of IPMAN, talking to us on uh, why the federal government must break the monopoly of NNPC on importation of uh, fuel. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking sports. Stay with us.